Welcome back everyone to TNO, the last news of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And we must do a helping hand. In an unlucky village in Siberia, torn apart by clashing soldiers during the Unification Wars, and looted by fleeing bandits, the impoverished residents that remained remained stubbornly in their homes, shivering in the wind as if afraid that if they left the village itself would be destroyed or stolen. Considering some of the stories they had heard of even more unfortunate villages, it very might well be even with them here or there. They had little food, warmth, and no guns of any note. All that awaited them was a slow death. Suddenly, they began to hear the sound of boots on the ground and looked out of the windows with a mixture of fear and dread. Had the bandits returned, they had nothing of value left to give them. However, as the sound grew closer, they began to be able to make out shapes, and then the people they made up. There were no bandits. They were, these were workers from the royal government, the ones that won the wars. They, their fear was replaced by a new and similar one. Had taxes been increased? Oh, no. However, the new arrivals greeted them amiably as they passed, and one man even ruffled the hair of a boy with his head sticking out of the window. As the villagers watched in amazement, these workers set about repairing the damage the conflicts had done to the village, repairing holes in the walls and shattered windows. These men were not here to take from them. They were here to give them to help them give them the help they so badly needed for so long. Some of the villagers cheered as it worked. Others went with joy. All thought the same. Luck had finally returned to their lives. Some semblance of hope has returned to their hearts. Perhaps Rick does care about us after all. And we're doing royal university charters. <clears throat> The horrendous state that Russia has been in for the past decades has all had all kinds of consequences for the millions of Russian civilians, forced to dodge bullets and artillery shells as the warlords selfishly fought amongst themselves. However, now that Rurik II has restored peace to Central Siberia, there yet still but yet may be a glimmer of hope for this unfortunate generation. The king has thoroughly decreed that the royal universities are to be established in every major town currently under his protection. These esteemed centers of learning will provide education to all of Rurik's subjects and give the youth of Russia a chance that they haven't had in years, the opportunity to receive a proper education, which will help our academic base and research facilities. Up next, we'll probably go with the knowledge of Tomsk. Even in the darkness of this warlord era, the intelligentsia of Tomsk have somehow managed to maintain a highly sophisticated society where art and science have thrived long after the collapse of the Soviet Union. With the city now under Rurik II's control, hundreds of highly intelligent individuals are left, wondering what their place will be within His Majesty's realm. The expertise. All these wise men and women should be a great boon to the royal cause, and it would be a massive waste to not continue the patronage they once received under the CSR. The scientists that once worked for the Republic will be encouraged to lend their talents to us, and they will be allowed to continue their work without any interruptions. The intelligentsia of Tomsk will know that they have nothing to fear from their new king, which is a great thing. Great, great thing. We've got so much political power, and we're out of manpower, which really actually is not very good. So I'm, at this point, done cutting military spending, just so we get some more manpower back. Hey, look at that. Nat annual debt interest is as 8%, while our GDP growth is 8.4%. It's a little bit too easy right now playing as... Uh, work, but you know what? We have no manpower, so we'll see about that. Maybe we'll save that comment for later. But we do have some comments to go through. Look at that. Western Siberian Provisional Authority versus the WRRF versus everyone else here. Cool. Reestablish trade routes. The king's infrastructure, or the kingdom's infrastructure, is still in a less than ideal state. And as a result, any and all commerce that comes and goes with the king's lands will encounter many inconvenient difficulties on their journeys. Siberia is a fast, harsh land, and without the proper roads, a trip through the region is a daunting task indeed. Sponsored by His Majesty's Ministry of Finance, new trade routes are to be established throughout the kingdom. Roads that still require repairs will get the attention they need. An extensive trade outpost will be constructed in even the most far-flung corners of Siberia to give weary travelers a place to find respite. Intellectual scuffles. Rurik sat at the head of the Vesh, filled with the former members of the Tomsk Salons. Intellectuals, poets, and professors, the most intelligent people of Russia, crowded into one room. Rurik was certain they would be of good use to Central Siberia. Gentlemen, said Rurik in a booming voice, I'm glad you all expect accepted my invitation, which is the wrong form of accepted. As a great and kind leader, I am wise enough to understand that there can be much that can be learned from your enemies. Wise, shouted a man in a sleek suit, looking very different compared to Rurik's ministers in large robes. You're insane, not wise. You declare yourself Tsar after you have had too much to drink. Rurik smiled. At least I'm wise enough to defeat your armies in battle. The group quiet, grew quiet, almost hostile. Oh boy. <laughs> As I was saying, I invited here, you here today for your ideas. Central Siberia is hard to govern, and our economic situation is less than positive. Your salons were among the, those who governed Central Siberia when Russia first fell apart. We are all Russians, and this is our home. The room remained quiet until a man with glasses broke the silence. Rurik, we may have our disagreements, but I can tell you are a caring man. And if you truly want to make the lives of the people better, I implore you to consider greater welfare for the people. War has ravaged Russia, and they need hope for a better future. Who needs welfare? Shouted a small man in a tie that reached down to his waist. We don't have the money for that. 
Uh, let's see. We, what the people need is education. Only then will they be able to improve their lives themselves and serve the country. No man can just throw money into the air and expect their problems to be fixed. Another man, slender and wearing a formal hat, look looking, a formal looking hat, stood up. The people will not have satisfaction without democracy. As long as you continue to be a tyrant, sorry, this place will only see despair. As the shouting match continued and more men began to speak over each other, Rurik was reminded of his children's own petty bickering. No wonder Tomsk felt its own government couldn't even agree on anything. Eh, it was worth a try, though. And then Siberian Wolf. Siberia is one of the most bountiful regions on Earth in terms of natural resources, but the constant wars have made it nearly impossible to take advantage of this fact. Now that the guns have finally fallen silent thanks to the efforts of Rurik II and his armies, we can finally turn our attention to the bounties that await us beneath the soil. There's still many mines dotted around the region dating back to Bukharin's era that have gone unused since the collapse he could, and could serve our purpose handily. Harnessing Siberia's resources is a major step towards building a strong economy for the kingdom, and it would be foolish to ignore the vast wolf that lies just underneath our feet. How about investment construction? Because we can, yes, please. The arteries of a nation. A large crowd gathered, ha, or gathered, had gathered before Lev Voznesensky, who wore a practice smile on his face while flanked by armed guards. Today, I bring you people of Russia great news. He proclaimed the great highway connecting Krasnoyarsk, Kemerovo, Novosibirsk has, as of yesterday, been completed. Rejoice for now, nothing will hinder the free movement of trade of, and of you, the people. The crowd murmured among themselves, though for the most part they seemed unsure what to make of the finished development. No matter. Worst comes to worst that they have to come around. After all, whether they liked it or not, the highway would play a large part of their lives from now on. Over the next few days, traffic on the highway increased at first slowly, then exponentially, with reports of booming trade arriving at Voznesensky's office. It was just as he had thought. With any obstacles removed from their path, people couldn't resist the allure of traveling elsewhere to sell their wares for more. It was astounding that the old government in Tomsk had never thought of this, but then he had never placed much stock into them anyways. Yes, he thought lighting a cigarette between his teeth, this was going to be a lot of people, a lot of money, and most importantly, of course, himself. Long live the king that makes me rich. Hey, that sounds like a good, like, literic. Yeah. Agricultural stuff goes up rapidly. Oh, civilian factories. You know I love... Oh, pov I gotta do poverty. Crown of cooperatives. After taking into consideration the wise advice given to him by his Ministry of Finance, His Majesty King Rurik II plans to announce the next big step in aiding his loyal workers, the Crown Cooperatives. Instead of suffering under tyranny of a rich oligarch, the only authority workers belong to the cooperatives will have to answer to is the king himself. These cooperatives will be allowed to cho choose their leaders democratically, and these elected officials will in turn answer directly to the crown. Already confident that this ingenious idea would be a triumph for the in workers' rights in the kingdom, Rurik II believes that the cooperatives will go a long way towards increasing the efficiency of the workforce. Alright, so it looks like we got a lot of this stuff done. Did we get that bonus for land auction yet? We did not, so let's wait for that. Yeah. It is almost 1967, so that's pretty cool. I got five more days for artillery. I love artillery upgrades. Get more, 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 more. Cool, and happy 1967, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. More stealth attack, please. Siberian wealth. We love Siberian wealth. Thank you very much. And let's go and keep spending more money here. That's totally fine with me right now. Military spending. Are we mobilizing a little bit more? That'd be pretty good to do. Yeah. Just in case. Boost, 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 boost. You ain't done building civvies yet. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. And then, oh, military construction three. Well, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing pretty well myself. And I want to make sure that our armies are always going to be well equipped with whatever they need to make sure that we succeed. Improve agricultural mechanization. The kingdom's agriculture is in a sorry state, to put it mildly, to put it another way. Our farmers are forced to make do with tools and methods that would not seem out of place on farms from 500 years ago. While His Majesty is well known for his appreciation of Russia's ancient customs, some things are better left in the past if they're going to actively harbor agricultural output. The king believes that a full-scale mechanization of this realm's agriculture is in order. This process will no doubt be expensive, but any price is worth paying if it involves getting more food on the table faster. Our farms will become renowned throughout Russia for their efficiency. Uh, go and do that. That's fine. Go and do that too, because why not? We have so much political power, I'm not even, not even going to be bothered by it. Oh, we still get 1.43 every single day. So much PP. I love the military factories, but they cost more money, so industrial modernization. Although our efforts to bring the factories of Central Siberia into the modern age were mostly successful, the fact remains that the equipment used in these facilities were woefully inadequate, and no amount of polishing and ad hoc repairs will fix problems caused by the unrelenting march of time. Therefore, it is necessary that we make an effort to completely finish the modernization of our industry by improving the equipment and machinery therein. Once His Majesty's workforce has the finest, most cutting-edge mechanical tools available at their disposal, the efficiency of the kingdom's factories will soar far beyond what they were previously capable of. And the district equipment will begin to slowly improve too. I love it, love it, love it. What else do we have here? 
Yes, we lose some stability, but that's okay. More war support, which is something we can use. More weekly manpower. Sure, why not, my friends? Why not? And we can reunify Russia starting in 1969, so we still got a ways until we get there, so. Not bad. The foundations are founded in Novosibirsk. The Siberian plan dragged Siberia kicking and screaming into the modern age, and as a result, it was transformed into Russia's industrial heartland virtually overnight. Nowhere can the effects be felt. Uh, uh, the effects of this ambition undertaking can be more clearly seen in Novosibirsk, which was a city that was mostly pro profoundly affected by the industrialization of the region. Wow, that was fast, Wales. The numerous foundries and factories in Novosibirsk were unfortunately left to ride under the corrupt Siloviki government that came to control the city. Now that the city is in Rurik, the second's hands, the situation must change. The factories of Novosibirsk must get running again. The city must reclaim its place as the industrial capital of Siberia. We'll get three more military factories and some more steel, which is great. I love the steel. Now, unshackle the unions. Uh, so we this one, if you like to read about this one, this is for Yuri, so which I'll play, I promise, again, someday. I promise we'll play him some, someday, but from councils into guilds. The workers' councils of the kingdom have served his majesty well so far, but as the realm grows, it becomes increasingly clear that they are becoming increasingly restricted to our economic interests. Rurik the second has, with the best interests of the nation at heart, proposed that the councils be dismantled and combined into a specialized royal guild. If you are like to read about better army professionalism, please go right ahead. This happens every campaign, which looks really great, and we get more political power. Plus 0.35, holy crap. Inspired by ancient merch and guilds of old, these guilds are to handle all issues that were once the responsibility of the councils, rather than emphasizing the workers. They will instead be focused on increasing productivity and efficiency among the workforce, and will answer directly to the king and his ministers. This will undoubtedly be the, of great benefit to the royal economy, which will get better consumer goods, construction speed cap, and factory output. Sign us up. Yes, please. Now, that's a little bit ahead of time. Oh, we definitely need to do stuff here, too. But we need to do tanks. I haven't got any tanks yet. We need tanks, 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 even though we don't have the... Well, I'm trying to get tanks here, but it's it's very slow going, so... Yeah, huh. But I'm going to save army XP for that stuff, so... Oh, yes, poverty relief, yes, 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 improve poverty, please. We're still at eight, 6 a month, but we're still 50 to 80%, which is not good. And from councils into guilds, thank you, my friends, thank you very much. So we're done on the left side, and we're going to wrap up the right side, hopefully, relatively soon. Uh, oh, back to work. Gavro stood among the throng of his fellow workers, a, set, a scent of sweat, and the sound of conversation hanging heavy over the group of 50 or so 60 men. Hard hat on his head and hammer slung over his shoulder. Gavril squinted against the morning glare as he gazed upon the factory complex he had once worked in. It, was, it certainly had been refurbished, and this gave him and many others prepared to enter the rebuilding at hope, uh, to enter the building hope that the old mad king had actually kept his promise. Some foreman out of Gabriel's view blew a whistle and the mass of workmen suddenly shifted forward. Gabriel found himself swept along the, with the tide and into his new workplace, his heart full of cautious optimism that he and his other workers had crossed a broad threshold. That optimism was quickly crushed, as while the exterior had been decorated with fancy trappings calling back to eras long gone, with a modern safe undercurrent, the interior of the foundry wasn't that different from what it was before. The furnace had, had unexpectedly belched out flame like some ash cake dragon and sent foreman in the infirmary. The rickety stairway up to the second level that had been broken and repaired dozens of times, and with it many of his co-workers' legs, or ribs, or skulls. The busted cast, cast casting uh, ladle that periodically leaked molten metal burned the flesh of the operator. It wasn't all bad, though, however. The doors, for one, could be opened from the inside in case of emergency. The wiring that kept the lights on was safely sealed inside the walls. There was a list of safety protocols, first aid tips, or other useful information on every wall, but... What relieved Gavril the most was the presence of enough gloves, masks, aprons, and other safety tools to protect every man in the building. The machines may still be very dangerous, but the madman has at least made a token effort towards safety. Still, Gavril did not feel much safer than he did before the city changed hands. Until Under the red flag, same as the old flag. Cool. Royal pardons. Uh, let's grab royal pardons. Our various enemies during the wars of unification fought well indeed, and they have had many generals among them who are definitely cut above the standard career officers, unfortunately. The fact remains that they were our enemies, and most of them now sit in a military prison for their crimes against Rurik II and his people. Rurik II has floated the idea of uh, issuing pardons towards specific officers who once served with their enemies in exchange for their freedom. They must make an oath of loyalty to the king and serve with his own... Excuse me, with his armed forces. Should His Majesty choose to go down this route, our forces should be will be bolstered with several more talented officers that can aid us with their expertise. Although the king still holds well-deserved grudges towards some of these men, there still may yet be a path to redemption for those whose only crime was being on the wrong side. But it's still a side they chose nonetheless. Keep building. Oh my goodness, this is too. This is. I'll be, I want to say it's too easy, but it's it's really quite not difficult. Boost. Uh, hire four instructors? Why not?
Beautiful. And maybe we should do shield maidens. Oh, learning from the Siberian conquest. Why not? There's the land doctrine. The wars of the region of five central Siberia were brutal and hard fought, but His Majesty's armies proved their worth and achieved victory in the end. To better understand our own strengths and flaws, it would be wise to look back and examine the doctrines of both our own forces as well as those of our enemies. We will find out exactly what worked and what didn't. <clears throat> And once this is done, the king's military staff can devise new strategies and tactics built upon the best aspects of each. With the advantages once utilized by our foes now assimilating into the or assimilated into the royal army, we can have a good start towards reshaping the central Siberian military into a fearsome fo force indeed. Rise of the guilds. As Princess Lydia Krylova stood on the platform, arms crossed and face fixed in a slight smile, which ha he had come to recognize her as expression of victory, Minister Lev Vosnesensky stood by. In front of them was the first gathering of the first royal guard, one of the princess's largest initiatives to date, which were intended to centralize and replace the workers' council that had, until, uh, until this point, been permitted within state territory. Long considered by the princess and her faction as politically suspect and unreliable, the dissolution of the councils was a clear victory for Lydia in the ever-continuing conflict with her brother. With the guild's own power, production efficiency could be emphasized instead of worker discord and agitation, and this, Vosnesensky could not help but feel contempt. The state was still surrounded by enemies that, combined with a revolutionary sentiment that seemed to seemed endemic within Central Siberia, was something that had to be addressed and not permitted to fester and establish organizations. Yes, he thought he looked out over the long lines of workers standing and waiting to re-register. This was a better choice. <clears throat> Yuri's counter-proposal might have had value, but also had more risk, and such risk could not be envisioned or entertained. He only wished that the princess did not take such savage and obvious enjoyment in her victory. It is for the better, my friends. It is for the better. Yes, and we would like to learn from the Siberian conquest. We'll do this one eventually, friends, in the steeps. Valmonte Dollar, I mean, that'd be good to do. And the Halls of Glory, the two emperors. Ah, yes, J Japan. But we will get there. With so much stability, a good amount of war support, a royal pardon. As the King works, armies grow. It becomes clear he needs more men to lead them, unfortunately. Most of the royal court's candidates were already in charge of the armies. Oh. He needed to look beyond his own trusted allies and look for candidates from elsewhere in Central Siberia. Specifically, the former generals of Nova Siberia, Tomsk, and the People's Revolutionary Council. If these men swear loyalty to the King Rurik, then we can pardon them for their crimes of aiding enemy regimes and integrate them into our forces. Of course, some of King's Rurik's advisors that say that pardoning these former generals is too dangerous and that we can't trust them. <coughs> Only a few advisors protest integrating the generals of Novo Sibiris, whose ideology or lack thereof is mostly compatible with their own. They would be the easiest to integrate, but some worried they may attempt to overthrow the king in favor of the military like they did to the Central Siberian Republic. The generals of Tomsk are not rejected for fear of a military coup, instead we fear, fear their ideology. The generals of Tomsk are feared to be radical Republicans, and a number of the advisors protest their integration for this reason. Then there are those generals from the People's Revolutionary Council. Almost the entire court believes it to be unforgivable, and many call for the socialists to be rounded up and exiled away from the realm. However, some argue that their generals who can, uh, that any of their generals who can still betray the Marxist ideals enough to swear their fealty to King Rook can be sufficiently trusted. All the discussion matters not. In the end, it is the king's decision to issue a royal pardon. Who shall it be? No pardons. None shall stand against the king. Uh, pardon the Nova Severus, Tom's communist, is merciful. Pardon them all. Because we want Lydia, where no pardons will be given. <clears throat> Which side are you on? Boris Kelchev had come as fast as he could about as he heard about that telltale hissing of a tear gas canister from across the street, where there once had been the raucous but ultimately non-violent sound of a strike. Rising to his feet in a modest worker's apartment in Krasnoyarsk, his boss union had made the truck down five flats of stairs in a panic. His breathing heavy uh, and labored by the time he got to the bottom of the steps, he stumbled out of the front door of the building and stared across the street at the local steelworks in horror. The setting sun tinted the sky around the Square orange and okra sh shaded tear gas rose like a smokestack as striking workers scrambled in the streets. The men cried out in pain, staggering in their blindness, held the suits, stained shirts over the faces, and coughed dry, bitter coughs. In front of the masses of terrified workers was a group of about 20 or so men. Thugs, really. Clad in makeshift right gear and faceless gas masks. They formed a line around the area where the orderly protest had once been, but Boris noted something shocking in particular. While some of these were clearly strike breakers hired by the guild that owned the factory, judging by the symbols plastered under their gear, Boris also counted at least a dozen local police officers in the midst of the crowd. How the heck can they let this happen? spat Boris, turning around to go in his apartment. As he climbed the stairs, he's still shocked from the sight, he continued to mutter to himself. That lying fat dude, the madman pretends he's, got, he's for the people and let this crap happen? Boris fumbled with his keys, got into his apartment, and walked over to the window and stared out into the city in a simmering rage. In some futile gesture of anger, he leaned out of the window and shouted into the infant night, Which side are you on? <clears throat> I'm on my side. 
Ah, we love the, the Shield Maidens. In her new realm, every devoted subject is willing to risk their lives to fight for a better Russia, even the women. There's no more apparent than this during the wars in Central Siberia, when her specially assembled force of elite female soldiers, the Shield Maidens, prove themselves to be more effective than we could have ever anticipated. The implications here are clear. We have it. Excellent source of manpower that has until now gone completely untapped. No longer with the assistance of Princess Lydia, we will begin to raise more shield maiden divisions to allow the women of Central Siberia the opportunity to fight for the king. With more fierce shield maidens at the king's command, who could possibly hope to challenge him on the field of battle? No one. We get more stability, or we lose stability, we lose a lot more war support. We get 35% more recruitable population, yes please, but we need to inf mechanize infantry corps. Demonstrated time and time again since the Second World War, mechanized infantry units supported by IFVs are without question the future of warfare as part of this ongoing effort to modernize his army. The king has begun a series of organization reforms intended to finally bring the infantry into the 20th century by introducing mechanization. In his ideal vision, all of our infantry divisions are to ride into battles on APCs and overwhelm the enemy with blistering speed of their attacks. No longer will His Majesty's troops slog it out on the foot, forcing to tow their artillery with horses. Horses! This is a new age, and such ancient concepts simply won't cut it. Our military must embrace every modern innovation they can and all, become all the more effective for it. Absolutely. Yes, both of these. Industry bonuses. Yes! We still need more manpower, though. Train new officers. The key to building a professional army lies in its officers, and we will need plenty of them as we continue to expand the military. Luckily for us, there is a whole new generation of young officers just waiting to begin their journey towards becoming the generals of tomorrow. Therefore, it is time for the military schools of Central Siberia to open their doors once more so that prospecting recruits can be tutored in difficult art of waging war. The new recruits are to be trained to the highest possible standard, for the king's military officers are to be the best of the best, consisting of the cream of, the what, of what Russia has to offer. Not only will this lead to a better better led military but also result in unorthodox new strategic innovations as well very good the new Siberian woman uh, standing beside her father as she waved to the soldiers Princess Lydia Krylova did not even attempt to suppress a savage grim because of each and every one of the soldiers was a woman a member of the first expansion division of the shield maidens and there would be many more to come it had been hard, very hard, to convince some of the more older generals and men of power in the state that the shield maidens even had a legitimate purpose, let alone that they should be expanded, but she had prevailed as usual. The proof was in front of her, and it heralded a great future for with women being openly welcomed into the armed forces, the state's available manpower had nearly doubled. Such expanded reserves had uses far beyond simply fighting on the front lines as well, as proven by the presence of General Anna Kostyr on the daily on the dice besides Lydia the King. There would soon be more like her. The opportunities now available, making sure that the potential of half the state's citizens would not be wasted. Yes, Lydia thought. This had been an important victory. More soldiers and more troops meant that the state could continue to expand and consolidate its territory, and subsequent security threats could be more easily addressed without compromising strength at the front. Of course, it also hoped that all of this new shield maidens well knew, uh, well knew who had fought to afford them this opportunity, and how easily others might conspire to take it away. Who can truly tell when such an understanding could prove critical? They have, and will continue to prove themselves of equal of any other soldier. And we have more research. Great! Let's keep going with this stuff, because I love it. We're going to need a few more military factories, too. But we've got plenty of guns for now, which I don't want to lower, just because we're going to need to put down a lot of resistance in the future. I love the support equipment. Tanks are coming along. We need more... Oh, we actually have way more army XP. I didn't realize that. APCs are, APCs are coming along. Uh, we've got plenty of artillery for now, as well. So We have no more manpower, which... Actually, these guys are all 40 combat with, so my goodness, I'm going to feel bad for who we're going to fight next, but not really, because they would try to beat the crap out of us too. The King's Finest During our nation's darkest moments in Kemerovo, our nascent military is forced to make compromises for the sake of getting more rifles out into the field to fight the King's many enemies. Now that all of Central Siberia has been united, the time for compromise is over. Our military must consist of the finest men and women in all of Russia, and to achieve this, Rurik II has proposed a significant tightening over the Principality's recruitment and training standards. Furthermore, he also wishes to completely overhaul and modernize all of our current methods of training to create a more efficient system for creating the soldiers of tomorrow. Once these reforms are enacted, only the best will be available to fill the ranks, and the military will become a crack force of warriors. We're ready to do whatever it takes to defend the motherland, the Ark Angles Conference. Oh boy. What was this? Socialist International? Oh, yeah. Socialist International pretty much. So, cool. And? Agricultural stuff? Weekly stability and more... Yeah, why not? Why not? Oh, God. Uh, keep building civvies. We're not done yet. Uh, yeah, and yeah, we're building not nearly as much. So build some more, shall we? We shall build some more. Oh, there goes those guys. The kingdom's finest, my friends. And let's see, what's down here? Blueprints, blueprints, blueprints. Oh, 
air bases. I'm going to do Rurag Head Diplomacy just for now. Despite being very much in the dire straits a few years ago, our glorious Prince of Policy has grown to become the preeminent power of Central Siberia, and can no longer be considered a petty warlord state by any sensible person. To further cement his realm's legitimacy on the global stage, Rurag II wishes to begin making diplomatic overtures across the globe. With a few honeyed words, his diplomats may just be able to find some powerful friends willing to take our claim to Russia seriously. All that has to be done now is make the arrangements. Great. Education funding? Yes, please. Man, this is too easy. I mean, maybe I should... I said it... I shouldn't say that, but... <clears throat> it's really not that bad. Unfortunately, I just finished my coffee, but... Hey, oh, poor Puyi. But we have slightly some manpower, and we have quite a bit of debt, but you know what? As long as our growth outpaces our debt, we're okay, right? 10.10% versus 8% for debt? Oh, my goodness. And then we'll do... Study new weapon designs. <clears throat> the Royal Army's troops are forced to make do with vintage bolt action rifles, while the rest of the world has moved on using fully automatic assault rifles and man portable weapons that can crack both the heaviest tanks and the fastest planes. This is unacceptable. His Majesty knows this too and has wisely tasked the ROD with studying modern designs from all around the world. With some careful analysis and just a little bit of luck, our engineers will be able to present the military with advanced but still robust designs that will best serve our troops on a modern battlefield. Only the finest and most modern tools for warfare will do for the King's Army. Our best side. Royal Minister of Architecture, uh, Pyotr Baranovsky speaking. Baranovsky uh, speaking. Is there any way to address your king, uh, Baranovsky? For shame, the old king's speech was noticeably slurred. Even from behind the telephone, Baranovsky sighed. He said to know what to expect from the old man when he was drunk. I apologize, Your Grace. What do you require of me? Let me ask you a question, Baranovsky. How can I claim to be the rightful sovereign of all of the roots when the world doubts my authority? The great leaders of the world look at me as though I was a crazy old man playing dress-up. A monarch of my prestige did not deserve to be treated this way. With all due respect, my liege, don't you think we have more important things to worry about than our image? There was a pause. Baranowski briefly wondered if he had gotten, forgotten his place. Utter nonsense, Pieter. We're going to settle this, you and me. Uh, you and me? What? Indeed, Pieter. You are now my head of my new royal ministry of foreign affairs. I already have a few suitable candidates to serve as our ambassadors. I expect you to put them to work post-haste. But wait, I... With a sudden click, the conversation was brought to an abrupt halt. Baranowski was left at a loss for words. The phone still pressed to his ear. Time to make an impression. Oh well, I guess we gotta do what the king says. When the king demands it, we, he gets it. The rule of skies. Oh, that's nice and all military factories are cool. The pride of the king. Let's do overtures to Washington. Our envoys in the U.S. have been making a great deal of progress in endearing them to our existence and have noted that the Americans have been quite receptive to their diplomatic efforts. It's not hard to see why. Although the Prince of Policy still has lingering Soviet influence all throughout its policies, we still outwardly definitely both defy both the communists and the fascists and thus make an appealing potent potential target for the U.S. support. The Royal Diplomatic Office is, is to instruct the envoys in Washington to begin opening talks with the aim of establishing an embassy on our, of our own on U.S. soil. Once they have accomplished this, we will have essentially opened the door to mutually beneficial trade deals with what remain to the free world. Good idea. Let's grab some APCs too. We can get those upgrades as time goes on, so we can wait for that. There you go. Thank you. Very nice. Because blueprints are nice and all, but they're not co super cool. But emissaries to the rising sun. Although the Japanese were partly responsible for Russia's total humiliation in the Second World War, we cannot deny that opening relations with the premier economic powerhouse of the East would be a great benefit to a young nation. Perhaps it would be for the best to put our past grievances behind us and reach out with good intentions. Royal envoys are being dispatched to Tokyo to begin making important diplomatic overtures in the Sunrise Kingdom, and with the luck, they will be able to convince the Japanese that the Rurik II is a man to be taken seriously. From there, lucrative economic deals could be potentially be forged to help bring the Prince of Alti's economy onto the global market. Ah, oh, look at this, yes. Very nice. And we're out of space to build civilian factories. We're building roads, and we have a lot of other stuff to build here, too, so. Yay! Yay! Heirs of Babylon. This happens every campaign. If you'd like to read about the Heirs of Babylon, please go right ahead. But it's now 1968. Tidings from America. Pyotr Baranowski found himself hard at work at his desk, laboring well into the night. The new foreign minister was so consumed with his work that he initially failed to notice that a figure had shuffled into his office. Pyotr pulled his attention away from the paperwork and towards his guest. He immediately recognized the exhausted man as one of his ambassadors. Ah, Yevgeny! I apologize, I was so busy I didn't see you there. My vision must be getting worse with age. How was your trip to the States? 
It was incredible, Peter. You should just, you should have seen the wonders they have had there. You wouldn't believe it until you saw it. They had these brightly lit buildings that you could drive right up to and order the most amazing meals, almost like a giant food stall. I could hardly... Yes, yes, but what was actually, I was actually wondering how your meeting was with the Americans. Uh, of course, Americans would be honored to establish formal diplomatic relations with the Rome as soon as possible. As we speak, my people are working out the details with Washington over our new embassy. Excellent work, Yevgeny. His Majesty will still be pleased, no doubt. Pietro didn't show up, but the success of the mission caused him great elation. He wasn't so sure in the past, but the old architect was beginning to think that perhaps he had a real talent for diplomacy's cutthroat games after all. Now, please tell me more of the wonders you saw in America. I just thought of it, but, like, what is McDonald's like in America and TNO? Is it any different at all? Hmm. Things I question. Friend of the Steeps? Yeah, we must well do this. We must well keep doing this, because as much as I love blueprints, this seems a little more interesting. Our sovereign, southern neighbors, the Cossacks, found themselves in a very similar predicament following the disastrous collapse of the Soviet Union. The nation found itself divide, divided amongst petty warlords, each fighting for his own vision of the ideal Cossack state, and the conflicts were as frequent as they were bloody recently, however. The situation has turned around dramatically. Kazakhstan has been unified under a single government once more, and the divisions that once plagued the Kazakh steeps seem to have healed for the time being. Now it would be a perfect time for the king's ambassadors to reach out to the Kazakh government to see if their leaders are willing to open relations, assuming the government is willing to enter such an idea in the first place. It wouldn't hurt to ask. Construction? Yes. Yes, we love construction. Build. The contacts in the east. Hidden away inside the foreign office, Pyotr Baranovsky sat working at his desk with his pen incessantly, scratching against a piece of paper. He was not pleased when he heard a rude interruption of the important business. Looking up from his work, he was surprised to see that the envoy he had sent to Japan earlier that month had returned in one piece. His astonishment was only heightened when he learned that they succeeded in their task, or succeeded in their task. They have forged a diplomatic connection with the Empire of the East. Such news, Baranowski assumed, could only be good for the future of the kingdom he served. Yet, as so often was the case for the foreign minister, there was plenty more work to be done, after all. Baranowski knew that communications was on their own would not improve the economy of the kingdom. What good news? And let's go ahead and grab some more infantry stuff and begin producing some of improved anti-air, because we are missing 3,700 pieces of equipment. I said I wouldn't do this, but whatever. Once we take out these, uh, these guys, we'll probably have way more equipment, so there you go. That should go on uh, and do a swimming leap for us. Go and boost that up some more so we can produce, 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 produce. And then the almighty dollar. Now that the solid trade relations have been established with the OFM, we can begin to reap the rewards. Our envoys in Washington, now firm partners with the Americans, we will begin to make requests for the U.S. investments in Central Siberia. Our attempts at expanding the realm's infrastructure has been going at a slower pace than the king would like, and he hopes American aid will help tremendously getting towards the ball rolling. On top of giving our construction projects a much needed relief, these investments will continue to build good relations between Rook II and the U.S. The Americans will be made to understand that the working with our king would be within the best interests of both nations. Our ambassadors return. After a seemingly endless journey into the heart of Kazakhstan, our ambassadors have returned and have some good news. The government of Kazakhstan was, was as friendly as it was first to believe, and as a result, a strong, fruitful, and hopefully long-lasting connection has been made with them. Pyotr Baranovsky was pleased to hear this, as he knew that having an ally at such close proximity could only benefit them with their future endeavors. Diplomatic relations with the Kazakh government would certainly lessen the amount of bloodshed in the future. It would also help bring greater prosperity to the peacetime, and with future cooperation now available, that would enrich both states. The foreign secretary was pleased with the ambassador's results, and felt greatly relieved that there was one less potential enemy of the the kingdom that would he have to worry about. Friends in Kazakhstan, ah, let's hope this stays for a long time and then invite American experts. Although our workforce is well on the road to becoming quite capable on their own terms, it wouldn't hurt to help them along. America has long been renowned for its industrial prowess, and their experts are masters of the craft. It's, a for it's fortunate, then, that His Majesty's diplomatic efforts to Washington have resulted in strong ties with the U.S., which has opened several interesting avenues that were previously unavailable to us. We can use our influence abroad to send invitations to various American specialists in the field of industry and economics to advise our workers and improve overall productivity throughout the realm. With their invaluable assistance, Central Siberia can once again become the industrial backbone of Russia. Let's hope so. Infrastructure, sure. And more resources? More weekly manpower and stability? Sure. Why not? Why not? Like the Pokemon. Alright, let's get some better planes, because we need some jet engines. We're still using literally we're literally using planes from World War II. That cannot fly here. Oh boy. American experts. The Americans agreed to invest. Good news. Our diplomatic efforts in Washington have borne fruit, and the Americans have wisely decided to make a significant financial investment in Central Siberia. If you'd like to read about better industrial expertise, please go right ahead. As well as a decrease in poverty. Oh, there it is. So, 
Already we are seeing various businesses from the US taking an interest in a realm, contacting a foreign office to work out the details of setting up shop in our humble kingdom. American aid will obviously be a shot in the arm of our young economic needs, or economy needs, but the most importantly, this is a good step on the road to building firmer relations with the US, and we can only hope that this is a good sign of things to come. A toast to American friends. Ah, uh, look at that. We get less, we get less monthly population. We get more recruitable population. Factory, more stability, worse for construction speed, research speed, factory, dockyard output, more taxable, taxable population factor, better income rate, and and this one we get better retention, cap and growth for production. Love it. So now the budget is looking like what? I'm not looking at it. And slightly better, slightly slightly better. And then we shall do a Zaibatsu investments after we get some more research done for the guns. Yes, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love guns here. Zaibatsu Investments. The Zaibatsu wield a great amount of deal or influence in the Japan's or Japanese economic machine. And their economic ambitions would hold great weight in the sphere. The king's economic advisors have proposed making attempts to reach out to the Zaibatsus to see if they're interested in making investments in central Siberia. This region is incredibly rich in natural resources, and thus our nation has much to offer to them. All we would have to do is convince them of the fact that there is much money to be made here in central Siberia, and the door to cooperation with these powerful economic forces of nature will officially be open. Although someone would the second court and distrustful of the Zaibatsu, he is convinced that they are, no, they are no threat as long as the requests are not too demanding. America will not send experts. America? Why? Why do you hurt us, America? Why? We don't want to do that yet. Um, anything here? No, we got to wait for that. Land auction, we want to finish this stuff off. We received an answer to our request for American industrial experts today, and that is not what we were hoping for. The Americans claim that the situation in Russia is simply too unstable to risk sending American citizens to work with us, and are worried that their lives would be in danger in such a wild environment. Well, this is this reasoning. If you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. It's not. Uh, this reasoning is not entirely unfounded, it is still disappointing nonetheless. Our factories will simply have to make do without the industrial expertise of the Americans. While we are confident in their abilities, getting the industry of Central Siberia back online would have been so much easier with the old with the aid of Uncle Sam. Quite a shame, but it is what it is. But yeah, like I said, if you want to like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead, but it is what it is. And then, the two emperors. Relations between the Rurik II realm and the Japanese have never been higher, and the king has decided that time has come to graciously repreciate, reciprocate the good that their investments have done for the people. In a speech later this month, Rurik II plans to make a speech, declarate a special declaration of brotherhood between him and the Japanese emperor Hirohito. The declaration will have more than, will more than solidify the strong ties that we have built with the sphere. It will show to the world that the time will come when the containment of Asia is dominated between the two great monarchs of the equal importance of stature, Hirohito of Japan and Rurik II of Russia. We have no doubt that the Japanese will be flattered by His Majesty's declaration. Let's hope so. The Japanese investment arrives. At least they're better than the Americans. The news of Japanese investment have been hastily sent into the kingdom, will soon be followed by the tools of the, of the Zaibatsu royals, politicians, and mine owners, together shared in a ready anticipation of the riches that would soon follow. They could barely wait for the land to be made rich from foreign investment. Unfortunately for them, they did not have to suffer their ambitions for too long. Various giant metal machines were to be carried across the Siberian plains until they were installed and left to stand, unmoving to turn at up the earth beneath them and uncover its hidden riches, in richness. In time, all that will be remain of such brutal efficiency will be scarred in empty lands. However, these thoughts were not present for those in power. They knew that wealth was needed to be to better the lives of the king's subjects. Besides, it would be more practical for them to accept Japan's assistance, as there would be more benefits that can be made from keeping them close. For now, there is profit to be made. Conservative victory in Canada, as well as in the Halls of Glory. It takes it took a great deal of effort on the part of His Majesty's diplomatic corps, but it looks like their efforts have finally paid off in the end. Although many retain a certain degree of skepticism, our state is finally beginning to take seriously as a potential container to the Russian reunification, and her presence has been at least nominally been recognized by much of the world's nations. If you'd like to read about improved academic base, please go right ahead. Trade with the outside world is flourishing for the first time in decades. And the Central Siberia region is quickly becoming a hub for international commerce as more bits foreign businesses seek to make lucrative investments in a king's bountiful realm. Our first few steps into the world have been so far a success, and the future of the principality is looking bright indeed. This is something to be celebrated. Great. And we want to grab better poverty relief once again, and better weapons, and civilian budget boost, advanced infantry rifles with the AKN. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. Well, for Billy, not bad. Even after we start investing more and more and more and more and more and more. Can we invest? Yes, invest. The two emperors, a letter to Japan after we click on the Halls of Glory. Following the request of his foreign minister to send an official message to the friendship of the Emperor of Japan, such a letter would help strengthen the bond between the two nations, the two monarchs, and open up a wide range of cooperation in the future, or so we have been told. 
His court members had attempted to hijack the writing of the declaration for themselves, however, he had remained steadfast and made sure that all of the work was genuine. He thought it would be better to keep it more authentic than diplomatic. Rurik found the start of writing the hardest. He had no idea where to begin, let alone how to conclude the darn thing. Yet, as the night went on and the bottle of his desk got emptier, he realized that the words flowed from pen with ease. By the time he had scrawled his name at the bottom of the page, he was quietly impressed with his efforts. Such length and such style could have only been the work of his genius. He did not bother to real analyze what he wrote. Instead, he had sealed it off and sent off right away. Baranovsky was quite taken aback once he had learned of the news that the king had sent off the declaration without first requesting him to read over it. He might have complained, but he knew better than to question his royal highness's judgment. The foreign secretary knew that all he could do was hope. Let us hope for the best, and maybe assume the worst. You know, you never know. And then we should continue with, uh, how about this one? Fund the Cabal of Helicopter Design Bureau. Jets and the like are all well and good, but our Air Force still lacks helicopters to support our trips on the ground. These fearsome machines can perform a multitude of roles, from transport to attack ground missions, and have become an almost essential part of any modern force. Unfortunately, there's still one man who can help us fill this gap. Nikolai Kamov is a brilliant engineer whose specialty is designing helicopters. His designs, Bureau sadly, was vastly underappreciated by the previous government of the Central Siberia, and lacked the funding needed to move forward with any kind of projects. Rurik II wishes to generously fund Kamov's Bureau so that he may help us with designing cutting-edge modern helicopters for our military, which would be a great thing. A grand conspiracy, perhaps that might not be good for Japan or the Japanese, but hey, that's not us, so oh well. And here, let's go and pause the game, and we gotta start thinking about our stuff here with tanks and such, so. Our future with tanks must be assured. Which hopefully we can remove these guys. 38, 40 combat width, uh, that's going to cost five more. Can we remove this for any more? That's going to cost five more. I must do this one then. There we go. It's not great, but it's going to. It's a slow process. It's definitely a slow process. Uh, since we're not, mo are we mobilizing anymore? Not really. So, screw it. Just cut it down, anyways. And then the Falcon Sleep. Our previous foes in Nova Siberia once commanded the most formidable air force in Siberia with a fleet of aircraft that could rival even that of the free aviators. They caused us much headache during a bloody war to overthrow the corrupt Silovo Siloviki. Now that they have been defeated, their aircraft now just sits unused in their extensive airfields just waiting to be unleashed once again. It would be a great waste to just leave all that valuable war material to gather rust. As it happens, the principalities in need of an air force, and these planes and airfields could fulfill the king's needs quite conveniently. All an effort shall be made to renovate the facilities and make sure the planes are still in working condition. Soon we shall have a fearsome air force of our own, which is a great, tremendous thing. And, oh, we have three more to do. That's alright. More ground support sounds pretty good to me. More ground support. And then we'll probably do the rule of skies. Oh, that's not bad. Air XP is pretty good to get. Serbia goes in isolation. Another nation torn asunder by the great game. And the dam has been done. Great. Oh, I love the dam. Too bad I can't trade political power for manpower. That'd be kind of nice. Any other poverty relief things or anything? No? Okay. And armor improvements. Our tank fleet is a fearsome force indeed. Well, not really, but without the necessary modernizations, they will be worse than useless in the coming wars. These vintage relics may have been dangerously effective on the battlefields of yesterday, but with the advent of advanced heat warheads and improved man portable AT weapons, they simply will not stand a chance against their future enemies. Work the seconds approach the Royal Office of Research and Development and stress the necessity for a fully modern force of fighting vehicles. The ROD has wasted no time finding solutions to the problem of our outdated vehicles, and their ideas are quite promising. Higher powerful, uh, higher powered engines could carry our tanks and IFVs across the battlefield at unprecedented speeds. While experimental new designs of armor may just be able to reduce the danger possessed or posed by the heat munitions, all that remains now is to put these theories into practice. A meeting with Kamov. It, the call had come about at about midnight last night, rousing Nikolai from the sleep, expecting some man of emergency. But instead, hearing Rurik the second. On the other end, apparently Rurik had taken an interest in his work in the Kamov Helicopter Design Bureau and wanted to meet him the very next day at around noon. After an exchange of niceties, or, yeah, niceties, <clears throat> Kamov put Rurik on hold while he scrambled in the wee hours of the morning to schedule a last-minute meeting with the king by two. It failed to book any kind of meeting space in the bureau office and instead would be meeting Rurik in the workshop. This is why at noon, Nikolai Kamov was putting papers in order and a model on the table in a dusty workshop to meet a gosh darn king and on a ten-hour notice. Right as he made his last preparations, the drug swung open and the old king hobbled his way in. Nikolai snapped to attention, but was quickly dismissed by the, ki by the king. At ease, friend, I'd like to see this informal. Keep this informal. All I need is for you to tell me about your wondrous flying machines. Nikolai raised an eyebrow at the term.
Nicaragua shrugged it off. The king had been seen better days, surely, offering the king a seat. Nikolai began taking his highness through the workings of the bureau's latest design. Rick was friendly and cordial, but quite frankly confused as a craft as well as his expenses were explained. Almost every sentence, the king asked something absurdly ignorant, but Nikolai humored his questions with slight annoyance. Then, once done, awaited the king's response, which had been stroking his chin for the last few minutes of the pitch. Fine work, young man, Rook said to the nearly 70-year-old aeronautics engineer. Rook smiled to himself, watching Nikolai's bewilderment. Anyways, I think your bureau would benefit from some funding from the crown. I'd like to put a few million rubles into this project. What do you say? Nikolai lit up, drumming his fingers across the table of excitement as a pro at the prospect. We would welcome it, sir. Anything else before you leave today? I think that'll be all. Good luck with your flying machine, my friend. We shall see what you have in store for the king. Or, really, for the kingdom. Hey, look, 18 more army XP. Um, are we getting more? Yeah, King's Guard Academy, but uh, not much else. 600 political power. I mean, part of this will be used to core other places, but we get 1.88 a day. Good lord, that's so much pee pee. Please let me improve my society more. We're still looking pretty good down here. Pretty darn good. And the rule of skies. Finally, our humble principality has an air force of its own, now that we have a fully functional air fleet, complete with a newly designed helicopters courtesy of the Kamov Design Bureau. We have surpassed the old Nova Superior's government to become the true lords of the sky here in Siberia. Our planes will ensure the skies belong to work, while our helicopters pro will provide all kinds of exciting new opportunities for waging war from lightning-fast troops transport to raining hot death upon the king's enemies. With such a dramatic advantage over our potential victory foes, victory is all but assured. Worker training? Cool. Uh, import heavy machinery? Cool. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. Better planes? Yes, please. 13 days for that. That's not bad. I still have comments to go through, but we're, well, I'll talk about a few of them. Uh, let's see. Someone asked, are there any other monarchist paths in... Oh, well, oh, Omsk must have died. Holy crap, that really sucks. But uh, are there any other monarchist paths in TNO? Someone asks. Uh, I'm not really sure. We played this Vyaka before. Uh, I'm sure there's one in like Cheetah or the Far East. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, obviously there's like Iberia, but let me know in the comments below if there's any other monarchist campaigns we've not done yet. Because I'm sure I've missed some, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, let's go into places too. That'd be good. Good. That was the first comment. We've got a couple more to go through though. But bigger and better. I trust that the design is to your liking, Your Majesty. Rurik, I, the blueprint, perform carefully. Detail with is an improved, uh, modernized model the tried and tested T-55 main battle tank. Something about it, however, wasn't quite shaping up in the king's eyes, so this looks adequate. Er, adequate? What do you mean? The designer maintained a courteous smile, but there was evidence of exasperated panic in his voice. Well, it's not very different from the old model, is it? All you did was fix up the engine when you should be thinking you should be making it bigger. I want you to see if you can fit a bigger gun and more armor on this thing. Well, uh, with all due respect, Your Majesty, but that wouldn't be practical for us at the moment. Tanks in this day and age tend to rely on speed rather than blunt force then. Soon the king put a firm hand on, his, on the designer's shoulder, and he felt as though his heart stopped for a small instant. Oh, nonsense. You're going to put more armor and more firepower on it, and you're going to make it work. Stop worrying about minute details and work with the same ethic that built this kingdom. If I was able to get this far without compromising in favor of practicality, so can you. The designer gulped. What, was the, what the king was asking for was not within his design bureau's con current means, but who was he to turn down royalty? Yes, Your Majesty, I will do my best. And we should do expand the arsenals. When we triumphed over our neighbors during the wars for Central Siberia, the king's forces managed to secure control over a significantly important munitions depot, Akaban. This facility is one of the largest arsenals of weapons east of the Ural Mountains, and for now is yet to serve the purpose for us beyond taking everything that we can carry. This is about to change. His Majesty has ordered the Akaban... Abakan, arsenal to be completely refurbished and expanded to become a fully fledging weapons production center once more. Once it is operational, the arsenal's expanded facilities will allow us to produce more equipment for their troops even faster than before, and will ensure that every man and woman in the king's army has a rifle and plenty of ammo at their disposal. Which is a very, very good thing. Alright, keep going, and we'll finish our line action finally. Tactical support, yes please. And it's almost 1969. Oh, we need to do this first. Agriculture, stability or war support, why not? And then the pride of the king. Rurik II's reforms are finally coming to a close, and so far they've seen a complete success. The royal army is now one of the most elite, well-equipped armed forces in all of Russia, and will certainly cause our tr rivals to go green with jealousy. And a formidable new air force will support our air troops from the air, and the inevitable wars do not look so bleak for us after all. If you'd like to read about better research facilities, please go right ahead. Some smaller minds might consider Rurik's style of governance to be antiquated, but nobody can deny that his newly reformed military is anything but. The principal of these armed forces are now a highly advanced modern force and are entirely capable of slugging it out with the best of them. All that remains now is to, be to put our new armies to the ultimate test, to victory. Thunder on a clear day. Igor took a sip of his coffee, taking in a quaint 
peacefulness of the movement. Here he was, sharing a quiet morning in a sleepy Novus Beer's cafe with the lovers of his lives, Natasha. Her fluffy, garnishly embroidered garments made her appear all the more ravishing on this fine day. Did you read the paper this morning, Igor? She asks, finishing a slip of her own. They say the price of petrol is going up. I'm glad we don't have to drive everywhere, but what about the folks who don't live in the city? Igor cleared his throat as he brought his cup to his mouth. I'm sure they'll be all right. It's not like cars and whatnot are very common here anyways. We got a lot of catching... Suddenly, an incredibly loud roaring filled the room, startling Igor and causing him to lose grip on the cup. Bad word, he yelled, or bad words, he yelled, as a scalding hot liquid splashed on his lower torso. Shifting the chair back, Igor quickly grabbed a tissue from the table and cursed under his breath as he began to wipe himself down. Natasha found herself stifling a giggle. You need to be more careful, Igor. What was that sound anyway? The cacophonous roaring was still audible, albeit getting much quieter as the second passed. Igor tossed the soggy tissues aside and looked, took a peek outside of the cafe's front window. In the distance, a trio of jet fighters were soaring off into the horizon. It's a gosh darn air force again. Why do we have to move somewhere so close? To a military base anyways. Do they have to fly so low? We got a lot of anti-tank. Anti-air is looking pretty good too. Even though I would be more fit to use, like that one, get more of that. But a tank fit for a king. Rick the second looked on with childlike glee as a new and improved model the T-55 rumbled onto the proving grounds. Despite the design bureau's excuses and objections, Rourke's ideal modification had made it onto the final draft, and now his creation was coming to life before his eyes. As he had requested, the vehicle was equipped with a larger 115mm gun and rather characteristic composite armor kits alongside the turret. The king turned to the sun with a smile on his face. You see, Boris, I told you they make my tank. Let's go look at it. Uh, Boris Krylov looked much more reserved. It's quite an impressive vehicle, Father, but aren't you concerned about the added price? The new additions aren't exactly cheap. This again? Those metal boxes are already lucratively expensive as it is. A few more rubles isn't going to kill us, Rubles said, turning back to view the tank as he put it through its paces. If you say so, anyway, on a more pleasant note, I've heard the tankers have already managed or given this thing a name. His Majesty's eyebrows, they call it. <laughs> Rurik began to laugh. The name was no doubt referring to the bulk armor kits on the turret. Ha, isn't that something? My legacy shall live on, even in the form of a tracked war machine. Only the best for our armored fleets. Rurik's triumph. Has anyone seen the king? He was supposed to be here three hours ago. Yuri felt himself breaking into a cold sweat as he scanned the balcony for the signs of his father. A massive military parade was being held up in the capital today, but the guest of honor has yet to show up. This isn't the first time he's been late, Yuri. Princess Lydia called out to her brother. There's no need to panic. I'm sure he'll turn up at some point. Yuri continued, though, frantically pacing, undeterred by his sister's words. No, 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 no. He's been late before, but not this late. Where the heck is he? Sit down and stop worrying, Yuri. You're gonna miss the parade, Boris Krylov pleaded to his brother as a loud rumbling became audible from the street. I think the armored units are rolling out now. Look! Yuri turned his attention to the road below where a column of tanks were making their way down the street. In front of the column was a particularly colorful and ornately decorated tank, and a familiar figure was standing out of the hatch, gleefully waving his arms. The prince's eyes widened as he realized who it was. <laughs> the prince gave a sigh of relief and felt a cautious smile overtake his face, as Rook the second turned to wave at him and the rest of the spectators on the balcony. Has he really gone mad? He really has gone mad, hasn't he? Yuri said under his breath, deep down that he wouldn't have it any other way. His majesty leads, and we will follow the pride of the king. We get more division organization, attack, d way more defense, 10% more defense, wow. And less so experienced soldiers' losses. I swear to God, like, the devs really made, like, this guy, like, <laughs> really strong. <laughs> like, holy crap. No wonder I couldn't beat him when, or, or I, I did beat him, but it was a very huge struggle when I played as, what was it, what did I play over here? I forget. I think it was a Far East group. Um, I can't remember now. I don't know. I play a lot of people, so it's not easy. But on cold days, oh, happy 1969. Very nice. And apparently the Far East and Soviet Socialist Republic wants to kill us off, so quite worrying, but... Hello, well, let's. Oh, I love this part. Yes, this helped us out when we tried to f beat up Rurik as well. Like when I played with whoever. Uh, let's get that manpower. Nice. A grand showdown. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. How many divisions does this group have? How much manpower do we get every day? 0.84. Oh, you go to. You go to. They got 21,000 manpower, which is worth more than us. We have roughly four times their factory count, so they do have a good amount of divisions, but they might be forty combat with. They might not be, so we have to be careful <clears throat> about that. But once we get enough manpower, it won't be probably any real big issues. Since, since the, uh, especially once we get some casts and some planes going. So, And we're running out of things to build because we're literally building anti-air here. So I'm ready for war. I hope you guys are ready for war because we're done like <laughs> with our focus tree for now until we take them out. So <laughs> 2.81 a day. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jesus. Ah. And actually, we're going to stop cutting military spending for now. LBJ has gotten a second term. I still need to place LBJ. Sounds like a lot of fun. All the way with LBJ. February 3rd, and within like four or five days, we'll be done. And fallback lines, might as well, even though we should probably be building some forts as well. 
Please let me upgrade our areas here too. More, some more, please. Mass mechanization, 8.25 a month. My goodness. Uh, where are we at for this? So, that's mass mechanization is almost going to be done. We're almost at modern agriculture. Holy crud. Screw it. Keep, keep boosting it up. Keep boosting, boosting, boosting. Oh, look at that. Prioritize what? Ah, military industrial complex off. More equipment? Why not? Where are we on equipment? 3.87, and we're currently in factory complexes. We need to get a modern industrial and cutting edge industrial, so. I was going to take a little bit of time, but that's alright. Oh, we have manpower. Thank goodness. Holy crud. We don't have nearly as many plans as I would have liked, but whatever. Thank you, and we have to double up on our limits, too, so that'd be good. Thank you. There we go. Nice. We can make some more divisions, finally. Now, we got some more of this. Let's go ahead and edit this. Uh, let's edit this one away. There you go. There you go. There you go. Can we replace them with tanks, maybe? One, two, three. Yeah, there you go. Slightly better. Slightly, slightly, slightly better. There you go. Not bad. Not bad, my friends. Tax and support. That'll come in handy. And we're done with the land doctrine. Great. Yes. Better artillery. Just beat the crap out of them. Especially with these 40 combat with uh, <laughs> motorized divisions with armored recon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be fun. Come on, let us go, let us go, let us go, let us go. I almost have 700 political power. My goodness. Maybe they'll go to war with us first, because I'm, I'm ready. Apply, apply for OFN funding. Okay. I thought it said membership. I'm like, you guys are literally authoritarian socialists as much as everyone wants to unite against uh, fascists and Nazis. Yeah, it might be a bit much. You know what? Spend. Spend more. Ray is a conscription level, or just recruitable population factor, really. Iberia abolishes the Iberian Council. Oh, good luck with that choice. Good luck. It's almost, I mean, no, let's get some more breakthrough in defense. That would be really, really good. And... Better motorized. Actually, what does that do? You guys have 5% hardness, 14 speed, 80% reliability. Then you guys 10% hardness, 18% or 18 max speed, 80% reliability, 1.2 fuel usage. Um, well, input, they use the same fuel, fuel usage. 2.5 production cost, but the basic motorized is 2.8. So, not bad. Not bad. And we could, what can we do over here? Yeah, construction, screw it, why not? Look, we're almost done. Holy crap. Can I build anything here? Uh, so they can no, we are we are literally maxed out. So as soon as we start invading, we got to start building everything up as much as possible. We built air bases everywhere. We built radar stations. Oh, not enough. More, more radar stations. <laughs> anti-air, yeah, more anti-air because we're running out of things to build. So yeah. Come on, you go to fight us first. Fight us first. Fight us first. Oh, hold on, we have, Oh, look at that. 26. Well, I'll cut you guys down in half then. There we go. Probably a bad time to do this, but whatever. Cool. Uh, let time go on as we do this. New general. Let's see. Improvisation expert. Trickster. Yep, looks good to me. Any upgrades? Probably not. Nope. Okay, then. Nice. Just... Just... Beautiful, my friends. Ah, oh, so good. Keep building up those rows, boys. Oh, what do we have? Begin the invasion. Um, I guess we could try it. They might actually go to war with us first, but we'll see what happens. I just want to have more regional development. Oh, it's not high enough. There's not enough green here. Oh, sure, more weekly manpower, I guess. More weekly stability would be helpful. Because when you try to integrate places, you lose stability and political power, so that come in handy. 26 divisions versus how many divisions? The Motherland Resurgent, not for long. Up to 27, so we might actually have more divisions than them, so that's not bad. Early cast, thank you. Jet cast, thank you. External fuel tanks for slightly more range? Yes, please. Come on, go, go, go. Declare war on us. So, oh, we can do this one? Nice. More infrastructure, more resources. Uh, oh. Ah, so they're trying to feed, feed up here. We're surrounded by communists. Hmm. You didn't have any... Oh, but top. Oh, okay. Yugra? I'm sure everyone at this point does not have a unique focus tree. Oh, the comments as well. Uh, try out the South Euro countries, probably like Orenburg or Magna Gorsk, or however you pronounce it. So, oh, there goes Yugra. Oh, maybe eventually. We'll see. War on the Horizon. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Um, yeah, we try out all the countries, the Southern Euro countries that have unique focuses or focus trees. Oh, we'll see. We'll definitely see about that. I'm not really sure. So, 
and boot motorized? Why not? Let's see. Let's see. Would I share my family's coat of arms? I said yesterday that my family actually does have a coat of arms, and we do. But if I do that, you will literally probably be able to dox me because there's not an extreme number of people with my last name. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would not be smart. <sighs> as much as I'd love to. Yeah, that, that would that would not be smart by... Would not be a smart move. But if you'd like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. Um, you know, this happens every campaign. If you'd like to read about the Earthcourt's hydroelectric ca station captured, please go right ahead. But it gives it more consumer goods, construction speed again, and more infrastructure construction speed. Great. Because Japanese sucks again. Please don't blow up. There you go. Build that. And then build that there too. Civilian budget boost. Cool. Ah, things are falling apart in Iberia, are they? Yes, they are. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, there you guys have won. 3,000 versus 23,000. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Doing a pretty good job. I would like some tanks, though. So, Iberian Wars, very cool. Good job, good job. At this point, just start making them. Cool. Not bad. Almost a thousand political power. Yes, revitalize national service programs. Why not? Why not? Right. Insurrection in Oman. Beautiful. Nope, nothing here. Cool. Uh, there you go. Right, good. Oh, actually, we should probably start doing this. Oh, we are, yeah, it's weird to have someone done. That's good. Just because we have so many consumer goods, we might as well do that, right? Yeah, we're still losing manpower, though. Military budget boost. Nope, keep boosting it up for now, because we are on the on the offensive. Desperately trying to attack our enemies. We lost about 12,000, and we've got about almost 100,000. Stockholm Conference succeeds. Good good job, guys, I guess. Continue the Yagods China? Huh. Oman? Not bad, not bad stockpile-wise. They are probably lacking quite a few things now. Yep, at this point, they are. And they have 34,000 more manpower left, which is not good for them, but I don't really care what, about them. Drop tanks. Get some better fighters. And they'll go to do some more research stuff after this, too. Yeah, not bad. Hopefully you guys can win. Anyone have upgraded King Rurik the second? He's personally leading from the front. That's not a bad thing. And what's uh, going on here? 39,000 manpower. Poverty relief? Yes, please. Take it as soon as you possibly can. Roads need help. More roads. Roads, 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 roads. I can't imagine these people giving up oh, their manpower now. Trying. Because now they have literally no more manpower, so that means any damage they take, they cannot recoup. So, thumbs up from us. Keep building, building. Man, we build so fast. Oh my goodness! Yeah, seriously. Like, I think this 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 country might need a little nerf, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. Uh, it's not good enough. We need to get higher. Yes, higher up for instructors. Actually, are we on a professional army already? Oh, if you'd like to read about the Cheryomnushki Air Base, please go right ahead. Well, that'll help us out. Nice. Very nice. We lost thirty thousand, twenty thousand versus quarter million. Not bad. Not bad. Those are rookie numbers, but we can pop them up some more. Only 28 divisions. And you guys are a militia. Do we have military police? No, we don't. Actually, one of these things gives us some uh, suppression. Oh, look at that. Recon actually gives you quite a bit of suppression, which is kind of nice. Motors recon. What if we did that? Can we afford this? Here, have some suppression. We love suppression here. Keep building, building. Jesus, you build so fast. Come on, give me more things before these guys die. Oh, and cryptology, you might as well do the WRF because they have actually united that side first. All right, well, whatever. And casualties, uh, not too much more have happened. We've lost 25,000, which is okay. And they should capitulate relatively soon. And we've got, after we spent, we started with 150,000 manpower. We are now left with less than 1,000. Hmm. Hmm. 
They have how many divisions? Up to 17, German missile deployment in Ceylon. Very nice, very nice. Spend, 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 spend. Was it this one? No, it was this stuff. Cool. Good. Nikitin. Uh, anything else here? I'll do winter expert, why not? Good job, guys. You're doing a fantastic job. 30,000 losses versus 300, third of a million. That's really not bad. Oh, we're out of manpower again. Approve worker training, because you can. A bonus to industry is always nice and, accept and acceptable to us. You only need to send one guy down that way. There you go. And we've won! Board of Magadon captured. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. That would be great. And go and do that. We're going to lose a lot of stability, but whatever. Cool. Alright, my friends. I guess super reunification. I don't want to lose it, leave this stage, but we got to do it. A kingdom of Siberia is born, and we shall do the glorious kingdom ah, into the atomic age. Russia has long been regarded as powers near and far as a backwater, a vast steep full of peasant farmers, and decades of revolution, collapse, and civil war has done little to challenge this perception, but this will soon change. With the resources, human and otherwise, that we have acquired during a campaign of reunification, we possess the ability to begin a nuclear program. The power of the atoms is a great equalizer in the game of geopolitics, and we shall now act to harness it for ourselves. Exert influence immediately. Um, because we were pretty friendly with them, we're going to try to exert our influence finally. I've never actually done that before. It's easier just to kill them off, but I think we'll just do it like this for now. So, Look at that manpower. Instead of roads, build cities. There you go. And then build some roads. Because we love roads. And then to wonders, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. This happens every campaign. Beautiful. More anti-air is very nice. Basic motorized with better motorized equipment. Metro intervention. How do we increase influence? Non-existent. Zero. Can we just like raise the relations or something? No, we can't do anything with them. Uh, Metro budget boost. You can cut that down for now, actually, if you want to. Cryptology. Not bad. So how strong are these guys? 11.5% annual growth rate versus 8% debt. So, not bad. 71. Oh, that's not much. Oh, did they? Yeah, it's still 71. Up to 50 divisions, which is not good, but into the atomic age which should be pretty good for us. And then establish closed facilities. Just as we are desperate to unlock the secrets of the atom, our enemies are equally desperate to prevent us from doing so. Although there are very many ways to increase security, very few are absolute, and absolute security is necessary when the stakes are so high. We will therefore sequester our entire nuclear program, laboratories, enrichment facilities, and reactors, and production lines, and close the cities. These cities will not permit entry or exit to anyone without direct authorization from the highest levels of government. Although cumbersome and expensive, such as irrelevant, we must have safety and security for the program, and we will, no matter what. Ah, oh, yeah, just gonna do all this stuff. There you go. I'm not gonna read that stuff, just do it. You have the funds you need? Just be great. Just do awesome work. Just do, just do, just do awesome. You're not building fast enough, faster, faster, faster. And then address the uranium problem. Russia is a truly enormous land, possessing many varied resources and vast abundance. Unfortunately, however, uranium is not one of those, so far as we know. Without a steady and reliable supply of uranium, we will have no program and thus no bomb. We must therefore make every effort in order to find the supply as soon as possible. No matter what it costs, we must find new resources and physical material. Honestly, with all this reading, I might in the future just like not even read this anymore. I'll like give you the option to read it, but I've read this like, like probably ten times. So, it is what it is, but, you know. Uh, free military... Oh, God. More, more military factories? Uh, more castle, yes. Dockyards? Oh. And we'll end the episode very soon, because apparently tomorrow will probably be the last time we uh, do this. The last... Because there's not much else here. How do I extra influence? Maybe they have to do stuff, too. So, we're going to address the union problem, which is pretty nice. And then, we'll have some more research in 17 days, but a foundation for research. More than 20 years of civil war has, among many other things, all but destroyed the educational infrastructure of the nation and led to the emigration or death of most competent scientists and physicists. If we're to truly have any hope of continuing and completing our nuclear program, we must address this. We cannot wait for skilled scientists to make themselves known or for a return from afar, or for advanced institutes to be reclaimed, we must act. We will directly fund the universities and research centers that we do have and monitor them closely for students of loyalty and aptitude who can be directly recruited into a development program. Good. Proof Jet Fighters, nice. 
You guys will do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and be led by Nikolai, Lyshenko, or whoever it was, and Boris Kraila. Boris, yes, please, Boris. Happy 1970, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Let's get some more research speed. And we're doing really quite well. And we'll end the episode soonish, very soon. Foundation for research next. Obviously, our research facilities begin to improve. It is what it is. So, the Grand Royal Army, huh? Oh, another one of these. Not bad. Uh, Yelena Putyanitev, Putyatin. Cool. And then expand the Siberian mines. Deep within Siberia lies Krasnoyarsk, it's called important for other reasons. The region is also notable for possessing vast quantities of uranium below the surface. Uranium now we can now exploit. In order to properly do so, an entire mining operation and the infrastructure surrounding it will have to be built from scratch. The effort required will be enormous, but the cost is even greater, but such is irrelevant. We gotta have that uranium. This will get more infrastructure, more infrastructure, which we already have maxed out. Increases material procurement every month, which is not bad. At this point, I might just cut down the construction speed, maybe? Three days left, that's not too bad. Let's at least finish Chase the Sun first, and then maybe end the episode there. Uh, let's see, let's take a look. So, budget-wise, what's going on? Two point something. Honestly, with, with what we've got here, we can probably start cutting things down a little bit more. Probably. Nice. Civvies, max out the civvies. Roads looking beautiful and great. Um, well, you know, we won't boost it up anymore. We need more main battle tanks, obviously, but still. There you go. More tanks. And then, a uh, source for materials. If we can not find enough uranium to support our program domestically, we shall have to look farther afield. Agents, illegal and otherwise, will be dispatched across the world to research and investigate both known and rumored uranium deposits. Whether we must buy the material, trade for it, or steal it, we will acquire it. The program must continue, and a bomb cares little from where the material and set it comes from. Which is a good good thing. Infantry anti-air is good. Uh, we haven't worked on this at all. It's going to be better anti-tank. That would come in handy if the enemies are fielding tanks, which they probably will under probably Zukov, I think. Ah, uh, go and see. Oh, that still hurts us a little bit, but whatever. And then we shall chase the sun. Although it will be a long time before we have an operational nuclear weapon, we have successfully built the infrastructure necessary to ensure that we eventually will. Our laboratories and research facilities are constructed and secured. Our educational institutions are tuning scientists out with necessary skills. Our agencies have secured both domestic and foreign sources of physical material. All that left is time. When the day comes and we complete our first nuclear test, we can take pride in both our accomplishments and the knowledge that Russia will at long last be free of outside interference, which is the most important thing for us. As we're building a bigger and bigger army every day. Better support weapons. It is 1970. Let's go with some more of this stuff. Construction, yes, please. Nice. And how are we building? We're building quite a bit more. Or 1.4 billion, which is not great, but hey, it'll, it'll improve in time, so. And then we'll read the Glorious Kingdom and be finished with this episode, maybe. Cool. Chase the sun, the glorious kingdom. Look upon the breadth of our mighty domain. People of Siberia, our foes in the east, put up a tough fight indeed, but in the end, it was not enough to match the royal army's skill at arms. Following a grueling campaign through the foreboding wastes of the Russian Far East, His Majesty's realm now stretches from the banks of the Av in the west to the shores of Kamchatka in the east. Following this great triumph, Rurik II has gone so far as to declare himself king of Siberia to commemorate the significant milestone in the quest to reunify Russia. His daughter, the shrewd Princess Lydia, has risen to become the chosen heir to Rurik II's coveted legacy. Even now, she stands at, his, at her father's side as his top advisor, guiding his hand towards the establishment of a stronger kingdom than ever before. Princess Lydia envisions a kingdom with a strictly enforced hierarchy, a supremely powerful state in over, in over, innumerable or in, invulnerable to its enemies from within and without. The end of the Russia's dark age is at hand. The journey must not may not be over just yet, but Princess Lydia will ensure that it's seen to be a long awaited to completion. All right, I'll do one more. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Placate the companies. More GDP growth or get more stuff. Land for the loyal. The legacy of the Tsardom. You know what? I'll let you guys decide. Should we do Plague the Companies? Or should we do Purge the Selfish? Let me know in the comments below as we shall finish with expanding the guild system. The guilds are the great driving force behind the, con the realm's economy, and they will need every little bit of help they can get from the crown at the behest of Princess Lydia. General subsidies are to be given to the royal guilds in, in the interest of encouraging expansion across the board. Of course, this will inevitably cause some grumblings from the royal unions. As if we need those naysayers. These days, you cannot so much as breathe without violating the increasingly arbitrary definitions of what they give to workers' rights. Perhaps it is time to curb the influence of the unions before they grow too powerful for us to overcome. While we understand that the unions serve a purpose, we can allow them to stand in the way of economic progress, and I hope you enjoy this episode. If you did, 
Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will reunify Russia and probably invade Kazakhstan just because we can. Thanks for watching and have a tremendous rest of your day.